Hello and welcome to the Educator Effectiveness System Platform Learner Training. I am your host for the session, Andy Sullivan, Director of Licensure at the Arkansas Department of Education. Uh, this video is going to cover the basics of the new platform, uh, which will include your login, how to create a professional growth goal, goal plan, view your activities, and then also upload artifacts. With that being said, let's get going. We have four big components, as I just mentioned, that is going to be creating a meaningful professional growth plan, viewing upcoming activities, uploading and tagging artifacts, and also the new comment feature. But first, how in the world do I log in? So we tried to create a system where you would not have to remember multiple passwords. So your app scan ID, a username and password will can be your username and password for this system. Uh, for many of you, uh, you may be familiar with your teacher access center or TAC username and password. So that will remain the same. Uh, if you are sitting there and saying, Andy, I have no idea what my password is or my username. Each district has a eSchool uh, representative who can help you out. So with the new system, uh, I want to go over what is staying the same and maybe some of the updates that are occurring. So on the left side, uh, we're going to begin with professional growth plans. And so what has stayed the same is that they are required yearly. They are supposed to be collaborative between the learner or in this case, a teacher example, and their observer, the administrator. Uh, we kept the yellow sticky notes. Uh, the learner will still tag components. And then also you are able to view your active and completed goals. What we have updated is scheduling. So uh, no longer are you required to have a beginning of the year, middle of the year, end of year in the system. What we want is flexible scheduling so that um, a, a learner and a, an evaluator can get together at any point in time, uh, whether that's a check-in and that you don't seem locked in to only certain times of the year. Also, your goals may now have unlimited characters. That has been a limitation in the past. I would still recommend that you keep those uh, simple and to the point for the sticky notes because the sticky notes are there to serve as a quick reminder of what your goal is. We have also added inactive goals. An inactive goal simply means that uh, sometimes throughout a school year, you may have created a goal and then a month later realize there's something different I need to grow as a professional first. So instead of having to mark it as complete or simply leave it active, the teacher can now make that inactive. And then when he or she is ready to come back to that goal, uh, make it active again without having to restart that process. We've also updated the prompts and those are linked in this PowerPoint as well. Uh, so we wanted uh, to take this opportunity to review that language. So there are um, a few questions as there have always been. Uh, the questions uh, are for leads and tests. You will only see the questions that pertain to you. So if you, in the past, you've seen both questions and maybe not sure which ones you should answer, but you will only see the questions that you need to answer. The uh, two areas of the prompts that we are really excited about at first, they are aligned with the professional learning community work. And then also, uh, they create a SMART goal. So by the time you finish those questions, uh, if your district requires that your goals are stated in a SMART pro uh, way, uh, this, these, these prompts will help you do that. Next, you'll see this year that everything is automatically shared. In the past, you have had to click the share button and I know that as a former administrator, uh, sometimes my teachers would think they have clicked the shared button, uh, but they didn't or the or the process or simply the platform didn't share. So we have taken that away so that you don't have to worry about sharing um, as you type the, and the system auto saves and then also auto shares to your evaluator. And then finally, there is a comment feature feature, which we will review in a little bit. Here is an example of your uh, base screen. Uh, you'll see that this teacher has a PGP review scheduled for this day. And then you'll, you'll able to see where, how you enter a new goal. 
uh, simply by typing where you, it says enter new goal. When you click add goal, it appears there at the bottom in the sticky notes. You'll see the three types of goals you have, your active, your completed, and then your inactive goals. And at the end of this video, we will actually go live into the system and I'll point out a few additional features uh, in real time. Once you create a goal, this is your screen. You'll see on the left side where you are uh, tagging indicators. Remember that our rules um, at the state level do not require a specific number of, of components to be attached to a goal. So if you are not sure what, um, how many you need, uh, that is a local decision, whether at the school level or the district level. So check with your administrator um, if you are unsure how many sh should be attached. You also see the goal questions that I referred to earlier and the ability in the top right corner to uh, mark this goal as inactive if you would like to. And next, you are going to see artifacts. Um, once again, we have the ability to upload artifacts. Uh, we have two options, the drag and drop, but also we have added this year in, our, in the new system, the ability to link web, uh, a URL. So whether that is a Google Doc, or a, a website, maybe a Google Classroom site, uh, you're able to do that. We'll look at that here in a little bit, but we try to keep that very simple. You'll see that all of these are at the top in red. So you can go home, upload an artifact, comment, which we're about to look at, work on your goals, see your activities. Um, the goal of the platform as we have created this and in our feedback sessions has been to make the platform simple so that you as a learner uh, can focus on teaching and learning versus the platform. We, we want you to grow as a professional and not have to wonder which button do I click? How do I log in? How do I, that, that we try to make it just as, as click friendly as possible. This is an example of the comments box. So this is where you are able to communicate within the system with your observers and um, you will get, you'll will receive a ping throughout. Um, so instead of having to go into your email and ask your evaluator a question or your evaluator observer uh, emails or walks down to your classroom, you're able to do this and document uh, those conversations um, if you would like to. Uh, once again, the comments option, this is an option for you. Uh, if your school district or school has a different way to communicate, that's perfectly fine. But our other goal was to have everything included in the system so that, that you as a learner are not having to operate uh, between multiple, multiple, multiple systems. So we hope you find uh, that very handy as well. That is the end of the PowerPoint session. So what we're gonna look at next is I'm gonna we'll all go to the next slide. And um, in here, we're going to have um, a link to your updated pre-post observation questions. And you see on, a, on the screen where you're able to view the demonstration site, which we're about to look at, uh, there are two different usernames you can use. Um, the first, you see their username one and two, I will read them to you. And then the, the associated password. So the perk of the demo account is that you can't mess it up that you can come in and add goals and tag components, upload artifacts um, and, and play around and get to know the system long before you start this at the beginning at the, in the new school year for 22-23. So I, I, we wanna be transparent so, and, and that you have plenty of time um, to, to click and, and kind of play around a little bit without messing up your, act, your actual uh, dashboard. Uh, because once you do that, it is, it is live, um, so we, we encourage you to come in here and, 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 and use this. So what you'll notice today as I have logged in that I have no meetings for today. If I did have a meeting, it would be here and I would be able to click on, in, it would highlight in blue anything that I need to do. So it would be hyperlinked to my pre-observation questions or my post-observation questions or the artifact that I need to upload. So that would be there. At the moment, I don't have anything. That's great. But maybe I want to see what I have coming up. So you have a way to do that as well. At the top in the menu uh, bar, we have the word activities. By clicking on this, I'm able to see everything that Valentine has had in June. 
You can view this as a list, as you see right now. I can see this by what I have this week. Or I can view by the month. How you like to view is completely up to you. But they are all there. I'm going to go back to my list. And as you saw, as I mentioned earlier, what you need to do is hyperlink. So there's no question about what, what's, what's happening. I have an observation. Uh, I have a conference. I have all sorts of stuff going on. So you can, you can view that. We've also included the ability to link to your personal favorite calendar by clicking here. Um, you, once you're in your real system, please don't link th this calendar uh, to you. That will confuse you. But uh, whether you use like Gmail or Google Calendar or Outlook, whatever you happen to prefer, um, you can use that link button. Also, to go home, I simply go home. So in the top, always click home. It will take you back to where you would like to go. Next, let's, let's um, look at professional growth goals. Um, you see currently I have two active goals, two completed goals, and one inactive goal. As a reminder, an inactive goal means I have set it aside because I'm not ready to work on it right now. Maybe I'm working on something else. There is no rule that says you have to have inactive goals, but we do want you to have that option. So at this moment, I've decided that two goals are simply not enough for me. I would like to add another one. And my goal is to utilize the educator effectiveness system platform daily. To make this a new goal, I click add goal and it appears. I can work on this goal in two ways because at this point I haven't tagged any, any components or answered any questions. I can click on details and you see my, my goal is here, utilize the educator effectiveness system. I can click the appropriate rubric and then click answer the questions. As I type, the system auto saves and auto shares. You will notice that there are no, uh, there is no save button anywhere on the page. And that is because there is no need for you to auto save or to, for you to save because it auto saves. Uh, you will answer your questions. Once again, move on. Uh, if you want it, if you change your mind um, and you don't want this goal at all, you can delete it. Once you delete the goal, it is gone forever. We cannot recover it. But you can also mark as inactive. And let me do that right now. So I've decided I don't want to work on this goal. You'll notice it has moved from the active category down here to inactive. When it is time for me to work on it again, I still can delete it if I decide I don't ever want this goal. Or I can mark it as active. And it has now moved into my active category. Once again, I can go home. And I'm back to my home page. The other uh, avenue to access your goals is through the goals button. Once again, it takes you to the same page. So just a matter of how you would like that. Once again, I've gone home. I have my three goals. Next, um, let me look at my activity. And you may have noticed that on Friday, June 10th, I have an artifact meeting type. So let's check on that and see what that's all about. I see here that my uh, uh, observer or evaluator has assigned me a specific component artifact. So what I know from here is that on June 10th is my deadline to upload a, an artifact that shows how I design student assessments. So I never have to worry. I don't have to get an email from my teacher, from my observer. I don't have to go ask them what they want for me. I need to go find a really good example of me designing student assessments. Once I found that, I simply click upload new artifact. And I have two options. Maybe it is a video of me in a, in a working in a PLC designing um, this assessment. Maybe it is the assessment I have designed. Um, I don't know what I've done, but either way, if it is a, is a file, I can simply drag and drop 
the file here, a PDF, a Word file. Um, if it's a document of any kind, you can drag and drop also a video. But we also realize that you may have this assessment maybe in as a Google Doc. So we've added the opportunity for you to be able to link a URL. So I would simply copy and paste the URL, name it appropriately. Um, I would always name something so that you remember what it is. And then also, um, so your uh, evaluator know what, knows what it is. So I might name this example of component 1F. It, uh, uh, once again, I don't care what you name it, but uh, it, it's, it's, it's handy so that you remember what it is. I would save it. And once I save, it would appear here in my list and auto shares to my evaluator. So I don't have to send them an email. I don't have to notify them in any way. They will simply go and look on June 10th for that component because they'll know it's due that day. And um, they can also, and you'll be able to see your rating. And also they can provide feedback in next steps. So you can see what that is like for you as uh, for this particular artifact. Finally, once again, let's go back home real fast. Finally, let's look at the comments. So as I shared earlier, the comment here is to help you stay self-contained in the system and to help communication. So maybe you are trying and, you know, needing to provide, give some feedback on how your professional growth goal is going. So instead of needing to do a meeting, I could update my, uh, my uh, administrator, my observer evaluator um, here. Maybe my, my evaluator has a question for me. You see some of the back and forth that, that's occurred. You know, just checking, are you able to meet this week? Um, the teacher has said yes. Um, and, and so this is just documentation. Uh, so you never have to go search your emails and you'll have a, a continuing log of, of the communication back and forth uh, with your administrator. Once again, you can go home. And if you are receiving an end of year, this is here. This is where you would find your end of year rating. Uh, if you are on a summative, if you are not on a summative, you will not have an end of year rating. And then if you ever just need support in the platform, uh, you, will, you have your learner user guide here. Um, so you can click on that. Like, how do I do that? We try to keep it easy enough and that hopefully you won't need the learner guide, but if you do, it's there for your support so that you can uh, always have the answers as you need them. So that is everything about the, the platform. And as a review, what you need to know is how do I add goals? We've covered that. How do I upload artifacts? And how do I know which artifact to upload? We've covered that. And, and then also, how do I know which activities I have upcoming? Once again, all of those are located at the top in the red. Um, you toggle back and forth between them. There was an example of our artifacts. I didn't know that. So that's what it would look like. Um, you're able to see um, the artifact and then the right and then the components that were tagged and then um, some feedback there as well. So, and you'll have history in the system. Uh, having said all that, guys, that wraps up our training. And um, once again, you, you will have access to this site. Um, and we will uh, please use it. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at the department.